Hello and welcome to Fat Boss TV. Today we're having a look at Shadow Lord Iskar on the 6.2 PTR in the Hellfire Citadel. Hello, yes, and this encounter is actually pretty good. They've used the mechanic from um, Shara Fear on Heroic, where you have to throw around the ball in the last phase. But instead of just doing it for like one mechanic, pretty much for this encounter you need to use it for almost every mechanic that is thrown at you, which means everyone in the raid needs to do it rather than just a few set people, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on all at once. So not only are you are lobbing this ball all over the place, you've got to be moving out because there's loads of fire happening and all this stuff. And then you'll have ads come in and it's just... It can get quite chaotic. You've got to have a uh, cool head on your shoulders to deal with this one. So as a quick disclaimer, this is a PTR video. This is not an official Fat Boss guide. It really isn't yeah, this time. <laughs> the way that we're sort of dealing with the fire in, the, in this encounter would definitely be done differently on live, providing the mechanics stay the same. This video is only to sort of show you guys exactly how the boss may look once it hits live servers. Now this boss consists of two phases, one where he's fighting you on the ground and another where he flies away and you have to deal with some ads. He will keep swapping between these two phases throughout the entire fight, so you kind of need to know what's going on for both. And the first of which we're going to talk about is the ground phase. Now during this ground phase he'll do an ability called Fell Chakram. This is where he'll mark three players and after a short while the boss will throw a Chakram at one of them, which will deal damage to anyone caught in the path of the actual Chakram itself as well as dealing damage to that person. And when it reaches that person it will also explode dealing damage to the entire raid. The further that target is away from the raid the less damage the raid will actually take. After it's hit the first person it will then travel to the second person and do the exact same thing. Again, it will do damage to anyone caught in the path, it will also explode doing damage and then it will go to a third person and then it will just go straight back to the boss. But the main idea with the ability really, it was like if he did get the mark, just get the hell out of the raid. He didn't really need too much coordination. That's pretty much all you needed to do. Another mechanic the boss does is something called Fell Incineration. And if you have done any of the bosses in Skyreach, you'll know exactly how this mechanic works. What happens is that a pillar of fire will fixate on a player and chase them, leaving pools of fire in a path behind them. So if you have it on you, move away. And we dealt with this really strangely i'm sure you could deal with it so much better because we were kind of focused on all the other mechanics we pretty much said if you have the fire fuck off yeah um, which you probably want to try and organize something a little bit better than that but the general idea is fire bad run away yep so as we said at the start of the video the main thing that you need to deal with in this encounter is something called the eye of anzu now to actually get this eye you need to pick it up right from where the boss spawns right at the beginning of the encounter if you do not click it it will immediately start doing pulsing AoE damage to the raid. However, when you do pick it up, whichever person does decide to pick it up will start taking increasing ticking damage on themselves that will only start reducing once you throw it to another player. And as we explained, you throw it by pressing your extra action button. Now you use this eye to counter some of the abilities that the boss does and probably the most noticeable of which is something called Phantasmal Wins. Now this is a debuff that will pretty much be applied to around a third of your raid and it will start pushing them off the side of the encounter area, like properly pushing them off. At first it isn't too much, you can pretty much outrun it at the beginning, but it gets stronger and stronger. Now the only way you can remove this debuff is to hold the eye of Anzu. So the idea is, as soon as this Phantasmal Winds debuff goes out, you just start lobbing the eye around, proper playing catch of it and all that kind of stuff, making sure that every single person gets released from these Phantasmal Winds as soon as possible. Um, you could say that some targets may take priority, like tanks were getting it, which I don't think they should be able to get it, but either way, tanks were getting it, as well as healers, so you probably want to get those two people out first, so they can continue doing their very important jobs, and then getting uh, the DPS out afterwards. But yeah, overall... Throw it around to make sure people don't get lobbed off the side of the platform. Another ability is also Phantasmal Wounds. Now, this one isn't so important. All it does is this is just, again, another debuff that's applied to random players after a large amount of magic damage has been dealt to that target that makes it so whenever they're below 90% health, they constantly take ticking damage. It kind of works like Infest on the Lich King. As soon as you heal them above that 90% health, the debuff drops, but you can also throw the Eye of Anzu to that target. So say a target's on 10% health, instead of like panic healing them up to full, you can just throw the Eye of Anzu on them. Yeah. You would then have to heal them back up afterwards, but at least they're not taking the ticking damage on top of it. Now, those four abilities is everything you have to do during this ground phase. And after a certain amount of time, it could potentially be health percentage based. We're not too sure. Pretty sure it's time based. Um, he will then fly up into the air and he will become immune to all damage and this is when, you know, his air phase starts. And each air phase is slightly different from the previous one. Now during this first air phase, he will spawn something called a Corrupted Priest of Terok and a bunch of illusionary outcasts. Now these outcasts themselves don't have any abilities at all, all they'll do is just melee hit. So you want your tank to pick them up and you just want to cleave them down. 
Now, the Corrupted Priest has an ability called Phantasmal Obliteration. This will place fell bombs on around a third of the raid, and after five seconds, all these bombs will explode, dealing large magic damage to them, the, the player that's affected, as well as anyone else nearby. However, one of these fell bombs will actually be a Phantasmal fell bomb. Now, this fell bomb can only ever be seen by the player that is holding the Eye of Anzu, and this fell bomb is dispellable. If you dispel this phantasmal bomb, it will actually cause all the other fell bombs that are on every other target to just harmlessly disappear, so no one takes any damage at all. So when this ability does come in, and as soon as you see fell bombs, you want to throw the Eye of Anzu to any of your healers and get them to quickly dispel the one phantasmal bomb, and then, yep, GG, you win. Now, while you are dealing with this, Iskar won't just be like flapping around doing nothing, he will be casting an ability called Focus Blast. Now this ability has a huge cast time and when the cast is finished, it will deal a shit ton of damage in a beam directed at the player holding the Eye of Anzu. Now this damage that the player will take is split between everyone hit by the beam. So the idea is, is that you have, well, the majority of the raid stacked up in this beam so you can all soak the damage. Pretty much there's no real reason to move here as long as you are dispelling the bombs there's actually no movement at all. So just have everyone stacked up and just heal up the damage from the Focus Blast. You'll have absolutely no issues. Now, after a while, the phase will end and Iskar will return to the platform. And it seems very important, at least it did on the PTR, that the priest is either dead or very close to dying as dealing with the boss abilities as well as these bombs can get pretty goddamn hectic, especially the Phantasmal Winds and all that stuff. You're throwing the Eye of Anzu around so much that you don't really focus on what you're actually doing in terms of damage and all that kind of stuff. And this next ground phase coming up is exactly the same as the, as the first. The ground phase doesn't really change throughout the fight. So you repeat that ground phase, dealing with the four abilities that you need to deal with in there, and then you'll come up to your second air phase. Now this air phase is slightly different because you now have to deal with one extra add called a Shadowfell Warden. This guy will cast something called Fell Conduit. This is a chain lightning effect that just does higher and higher damage every time he casts it. Um, however, it is interruptible, but only interruptible to players that are holding the Eye of Anzu. So because of this, you not only have to have the healer dispel with the eye, because of course you still have the corrupted priests, and of course you've got the outcast, but they don't even matter. But you also need to have a player interrupt with the eye during this phase. But the thing is, healers can interrupt. Yeah, pretty much every healer can interrupt. So, so you can actually just have, like, say, even even if you only have three healers, you can just have a rotation of those three healers that both dispel and interrupt. Yep. And it kind of counters the whole thing. As long as, once again, you are stacked up for the Focus Blast, this air phase doesn't seem too difficult. It's just very important that you do interrupt this Fell Conduit because it does so much damage over a period of time. And this is pretty much the point we got up to. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage of the third air phase, but it appears in the third air phase that there is another ad called a Fell Raven, um, who just puts a really nasty tank debuff on them um, that just explodes and deals a load of damage to the tank and the entire raid. The idea is, again, you throw the Eye of Anzu to this target and that would remove the debuff. But or at you, least stop it being applied or yeah, something. Yeah, I think you'd need to have the healer of course dispel and interrupt first and then the healer would throw it to the tank and then the tank would throw it to a, a new healer and then you just rotate yeah. it around like that um but that's pretty much all we got to see with the fight but i i love this fight i think it's really really good but to sort of give some feedback one issue i have really i think you share the concern with me as well is that the chakram the ability that bounces from one player to another it's kind of hard to see when you exactly have it there's like an animation like a, a an old school hunter's mark above your head but considering the whole raid is stacked, you can't even tell if it's on you. You do actually get a... Um, like a server warning. A sort server of thing. warning, yeah, that says you have the blah, 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 blah in chat and across the middle of your screen, which I guess is some indication. But it would be so much better if it was just a debuff. Yeah, if it was a debuff, that would fix a lot of things. And really, once you get um, your, your boss mods and weak horrors and all that kind of stuff, that could pretty much carry you through that anyway. But for the people who are kind of sta playing with base UI... It's not really that much of a big indication. I would much prefer to have a debuff 100%. Also, one thing with the fire, I'm not really too keen on the way it spawns in. It kind of spawns in, creates a fire patch, and then goes, I'm going on you. And it's just like, oh, shit, okay, quickly. Yeah. So if it is anywhere near you, you've always got to be like, you've always got to pretend that it is going to be on you. And I prefer if it, as soon as it landed, it fixated on someone and maybe gave them a bit of an opportunity to react to it. Or almost um, spawned underneath them rather than sort of around them. Yeah. So they knew immediately whether it was on them or not. And yeah. again, it may be if it put a debuff on them, 
Well, it does put a debuff on them. What's wrong with them. debuffs? It does put a debuff on them after they get fixated. That's what I mean. It doesn't yeah. do it immediately. There's yeah. no reaction time. You almost yeah. have the fire on you immediately, which is uh, pretty scary. A bit shit. But all these, they're kind of like miny little nitpick things. But overall, I think the fight is really, really cool. Um, it looks awesome. I really like the fact that when you actually hold the eye of Anzu, like the whole room like kind of changes a bit. You get like a horrible green texture on your screen yeah. saying you're holding some horrible artifact. But yeah, this fight is going to be super carried by your um, your raid leader though as well. And, oh, yeah. and boss mods as well. So as soon as you get your raid leader knowing what the fuck to do with the eye of Anzu, as well as boss mods, you should be absolutely fine. But yeah, really cool boss and I can't wait to see it on live. So thank you very much for watching this little preview, guys. If you did enjoy it, then please do drop us down a like. It helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to see more PCR previews, then please do click the link in the description. That'll take you straight to a playlist where you can see all our other Hellfire Citadel bosses. Thanks for watching. Thank you.